Because what I find interesting also is the people who are not or fay with how budgets work, they have this thing called the forward estimates, which is they spread the money over the next four years. And so they project into the future what they're going to be spending money on. And a lot of the initiatives that they've done for this lady budget, all the funding drops off a cliff in the fifth year. So <laughs> it, look, it looks well funded for the four years of the forward estimates. But I think the domestic violence stuff drops down to $2 million in the fifth year. And so what one of the economists from the Australian Institute was saying, Either they're going to fix gender equality and family violence in four years, or they're not taking this seriously. This is a box ticking exercise to. I'll, I'll, know... I'll go with option B. <laughs> so a lot of this budget seems to be a scraping the political barnacles off the uh, you know the ship of state, so to speak, it's and. Tribute. It is, yeah. It, and one of the interesting things about budget gets all the economics nerds really excited is that the government can't hide in a budget. It's all there in black and white. And the budget reveals in black and white what their priorities are. So one of the things that the Australian Institute picked up in their analysis was the Office for Women, whose purpose is to put a gender lens on basically every portfolio on the government, is having its funding cut by half over the next four years. That shows you how seriously the government is taking women's issues and women's everything. Let's 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 dive into that just a little bit because this, as you described it, this was coined as the lady budget or the women's the women's budget. There was an eighty-four page women's supplement to the budget papers that highlighted all of the things that have been done for for women in this budget. What's actually in there for women? Take a moment, well, think about if, that one. <laughs> well, if you take the childcare out, that's a family problem. That's and not a women's problem. Yes. Just on yes. the child, well, the childcare subsidy doesn't start for another year. Mm. Yes. So, oh, we'll just wait a year because it won't matter now. It, no. We'll be right for the next year. We'll yeah. be up with it so far. So, oh, yeah, they'll we'll, be right to hold off while we invest yeah. in other women's issues as well. Women's issues. Such as, yes. <laughs> That was over half the, spun the, the funding. Women received $3.4 billion in funding in, in this budget, the initiatives that were specifically targeting women. Those included childcare, which is ostensibly a social issue or an educational issue. It's not a women's issue because men have kids as well, believe it or not. Speaking as a man and, and as one who has children, I can testify to that fact. Yeah. Uh, there was funding in there for domestic violence. And again, most domestic violence is actually perpetrated by men. So if you're going to talk about it as an issue at all, it's a male problem, not a women problem. But And without being glib about it, there was useful funding in there for women to escape domestic violence, but nothing in there to actually stop it. Yes, that was an incredibly good initiative. To, because they went they went from deciding that women could raid their super they're already lower than the male average super fund which is ridiculous. to escape which, yeah yep. which which a was as you said ridiculous b a lot of women don't have much money in their super fund so their ability to raid the super fund to get enough money to escape is probably questionable but That's also right. it, it opened them up to the possibility of coercive control and and their you know their abusive partner forcing them to raid their super fund to give the money to him. So thankfully they knocked that on the head and they've gone and done a complete 180 and gone, actually, no, no, the government will hand you escape money, which from a coalition government, which has a, a widely documented women problem, is actually really like astonishingly good policy. Mm. But, but as you said, they, they're doing nothing to actually address the root cause of domestic violence, which is toxic masculinity and male violence. Well, out of it, there is the, admittedly, there is $90 million of it that is going to be spent on the prevention and education of what that actually looks like. So it's about support programs and the prevention there and actually creating something that's a bit more informative on a community-based level. But I, I don't know what that actually looks like. Chances are it's going to be another television campaign after Maybe another. Maybe we can have some NRL stars to talk at us. Well, that's it, and bring up the same rhetoric of, oh, oh, it's just a boy, you know, that's what boys do. And mm -hmm. chances are that's probably what the $90 million will be spent on in actually education and informing people about respectful relationships. But, like, there are roughly 12 million men in Australia. That's about $7.50 per male to be spent on domestic violence prevention. Doesn't feel like enough. No. The, the section that was being spent on women's health worked out, I think, to be about $3.80 per woman per year, which 
although like funding you know research and stuff into endometriosis is an incredibly again great policy well overdue but if this is what the liberals think is a is a lady budget i'm i'm un, i'm really underwhelmed as a lady yeah it, it, <laughs> even perhaps like it doesn't buy you a packet of sanitary products genuinely if the government wants to invest in something you know you may as well just send a box of you by cotex not unsponsored but to every woman's door and it actually would probably work out that they gave you a little bit more yeah like, and that's that's the irony of it yeah it's it's a bit sad and and again if you look at you know the priorities and, and what they're actually spending on all of these measures in the budget are temporary they all cut out after the forward estimates after so after four years all this funding disappears however the i think it's what 140 billion dollars that they're spending on on the stage three tax cuts for high-income individuals they're permanent. Yeah, it's permanent. 